seven things a 10,000 rupee smartphone can do now in 2019, but couldn't do in 2018. There's probably more, but let's just focus on the important stuff. And for the video, I'm considering the best budget phones from both years. Zenfone Max M2, Zenfone Max Pro M1, um, and Realme 2 from 2018, and Redmi Note 8, Realme 5S from 2019. Actually, even Redmi Note 7S and Realme 3 Pro. After price cut, they also cost 10,000 rupees now. Now, speaking of changes, here's something that could completely change the way you experience books, courtesy of our sponsor, Storytel. Storytel is an amazing audiobook app where voice actor narrates the book instead of you having to read the physical copy. It's a lot more interesting and helps finish a book while you're driving, cleaning or whatever. The app lets you control everything from the playback speed, sleep timer to even inserting custom bookmarks. The best thing about it is their collection of over 1 lakh plus books in various categories and multiple Indian languages like Hindi, Marathi and Malayalam. I even found Riverdale on the app. I've already downloaded it for offline listening while I travel. Uh, and if you want to check out the app, there is a usually a 14 day free trial. But you guys being technology jock subscribers get an extended free trial of 30 days. The special trial link can be found in the description. So explore and see if it's a good fit for you like it is for me. Number one, the design. 2018 budget phones either had huge bezels or a huge ugly notch at the top. Dewdrop notch was considered a bit more of a premium feature. We saw that on the OnePlus 60, for example. But in 2019, pretty much every budget phone comes with a dewdrop notch. It's become a standard now. And it's a good thing. Can you imagine going back to a phone with a huge notch? Now, I'm actually curious to know. Let me know in the comments. And in terms of looks, Brands have gone from solid and classy to shiny and attractive. Different sorts of gradient looks. Don't get me wrong, every phone still offers a plain white or black variant. But yeah, looks are completely subjective end of the day. Number two, it was really hard to see a 4GB, 64GB storage variant under 10,000 rupees last year. But now we have quite a few options. Redmi Note 8, Note 7S, Realme 5S 3 Pro, everything has 464 as the base variant. And that's a much needed change in my opinion. Images and videos take up a lot of space these days. And most importantly, PUBG and Call of Duty have become super popular. Those two games alone take up about 5 GB space or even more if you download those additional maps and stuff. So 32 GB of which only 25 GB is usable doesn't seem to be enough at all anymore. And yes, images and videos take up a bit more space uh, because, well, point number three, we have better cameras, higher resolution cameras, and 4K is very common. Let's be honest, 2018 budget phones had terrible cameras, average colors and contrast, poor dynamic range, and low light images were barely usable. But in 2019, even budget phones started getting good sensors like Samsung's 48 megapixel GM1 sensor and 4K is very common. So you get super sharp images and another feature that was exclusive to premium phones last year, I mean, it wasn't even available on some flagships, but in just one year, it has made its way to budget phones. Guess the feature, let's see if you can get it right. It's easy. Yep, night mode. Low light images are far better now. There is absolutely no comparison. Number four, a proper secondary camera and even a third functioning camera. Ultra wide angle camera was not even available on 2018 flagship phones, except very few phones like the LG G series ones. iPhone didn't have it, Pixel didn't have it, it still doesn't have it. Galaxy S9, Note 9, OnePlus 60, none of them had it. But suddenly it just went kaboom and it's everywhere now. Be it good or bad, it's everywhere. Both Realme 5S and Redmi Note 8 have it. The quality is just average, but if you really want a wider perspective, you can use it. Like when you need it, it's there, right? And about the third functioning camera, we have a dedicated two megapixel macro camera as well on these phones. Again, not the best quality macro shots we've seen. It's just two megapixels after all, but if you really want it, it's there. You can get some interesting results if you try hard enough. 
Also, I'd appreciate it if brands stop providing the depth sensor. I mean, I understand they had to include it last year so they could call it a dual camera setup, but now they already have two or three proper functioning cameras. Why do you want to call it four? Why get greedy? Anyway, uh, what else do these phones have? Display hasn't changed much. We can still see some 1080p displays and some 720p displays, and the quality is also similar. But the display protection has become much better from no Gorilla Glass or unspecified version of Gorilla Glass in 2018 to Gorilla Glass 5 and even 6 in 2019. The Zenfone Max Pro M2 has Gorilla Glass 6 and yeah, it's currently priced at 10K. And phones like the Redmi Note 8 and 7S have Gorilla Glass 5 to the front and the back. I know glass is glass and glass breaks, but the level of impact does matter, guys. Uh, I've dropped the OnePlus 60 several times. It has fallen pretty badly. There were scratches, there were dents, but the screen did not crack. That's how good Gorilla Glass 6 is. It's just that if you're not interested in applying a tempered glass, then Gorilla Glass 5 or 6 is better than nothing, right? Number six, fast charging. Honestly, this is something I didn't expect to see in budget phones this year. Remember, just a few months ago, even 14,000 rupee Redmi phones didn't have fast charger in the box. Things have changed rapidly ever since. The Note 8 comes with an 18 watts adapter in the box. The Realme 3 Pro comes with a 20 watts adapter for VOOC 3.0 fast charging. Both of the phones can go up to 50% in just 30 minutes. And number seven, last but not least, slow motion videos. 2018 budget phones either had no slow motion option uh, or very terrible options. The quality wasn't great. But now we've got 1080p slow motion at 120 FPS and 720p resolution at 240 FPS. Both are pretty good. Uh, the Realme 3 Pro even has a 960 FPS option. It's not genuine. It's, it's just actually 240 frames duplicated thrice to make it look like 960 FPS. But the point is you get something, something good. An honorary mention to EIS, Electronic Image Stabilization, a very subtle spec on paper, but makes a huge difference to your videos. It's available on pretty much every 2019 phone that I mentioned in this video. Realme 3 Pro, Redmi Note 8, Realme 5S, uh, and so on. Now, an interesting question. If you had to buy a 10,000 rupee phone now, among these seven, eight things that we saw, name any two things you cannot live without, just two. All right, subscribe to Technology Jock and hit the bell icon. See you in the comment section. Take care. Bye. I was just holding the phone in the right hand. That's why I used the left hand. Did you think of anything else?